going, everybody? Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. Today, I have a good friend, talented artist, Hala Murani Hernandez. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> How's it going? How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thanks. Uh, you know, it's been a while. Uh, we haven't really uh, connected face to face like this since we connected through social media. And thank God for technology. We're able to reach out and, um, you know, just see what other creatives uh, and artists are doing in the industry. How's everything, been, how's everything been going with you, uh, you know, during the pandemic and, you know, this past crazy year? I don't even know where to start. It's been uh, a challenge, which I'm not afraid of. I actually love challenges. I encourage them for myself. So it's, it's been a struggle, but, you know, we're alive. Luckily, you know, I made it through, so. Yeah, no, can't for complain. sure. Yeah, we, we can't complain. And that's it. And uh, every time I talk to like either a colleague or a friend, a uh, family member, they always ask me like, how do you how do you do it? How do you keep sane? Right? Because they know my field, they know the industry that we're in, I should say. Yes. And I always tell people I always joke around first thing I says is ah, I'm just keeping busy keeping creative, uh, yes. finding any any which way I can. This is why I started the podcast. Or you see my artworks. I noticed you've been supportive of the artworks, So I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. More to come more to come um so yeah it's you're just, super uh, talented that's awesome thank you yeah and, and you as well like um one thing i what struck me about your work is uh you're you, you have a witty sense of humor you don't take yourself too seriously um you have a lot of charisma true. yeah true <laughs> I, I think i'm on the right path with that um from, from what i've seen a lot of your skits are, are very tongue-in-cheek um like the last one the last one i saw it, it it always starts off so like like I'm, I'm i don't know what to expect and then you pay attention closely <laughs> and there's like the sexual innuendo going on <laughs> and and what i'm what i'm saying is like you really uh you embrace that you know like you, you're you're an attractive person right Thank and you. you yeah and no but you use that uh, to your advantage and it it um it just makes the content that much more intriguing, like the, the way you set it up. I don't know if that was your idea, that skit that I'm referring to, or if that was no, a director that came to you. No, it was, it was a director, but I did choose the script myself. And that's right, the one right. I wanted to do because I thought it was so sleazy. And like, I'm like, yeah. this is such a challenge. I've never done anything this sleazy. Why not? It's really yeah. fun. <laughs> and you got the, you got that, uh, you know, the, the guy, the, the other actor to play it off the word so well. And, you know, it was just so believable. And that's what I mean by it. it's just unpredictable like where it was headed I had no idea what was happening but what's funny is my mind was going there I was saying to myself like is this what I think it is and then when you started opening your mouth I'm like yep that, that's going yep. that direction right <laughs> but and this is what I mean by like you're very self-aware like you, you you don't care you don't shy away uh you just take advantage and you you're convin convincing in your roles um you. which I want to get into with acting like so take me through what was the inspiration to, to even start this profession like pursue this oh. Goodness gracious, such a tough question. Um, yeah. Because you know, my first career, what I am not first as in priority, but like what yeah. I do for a living. Exactly. So it's, it's com confusing for a lot of people. They're like pharmacist, actor, what? Like how, right. you know, how did that even happen? We're going to get to that later. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, acting really a couple of years ago, I started taking acting classes. I, I needed a creative outlet. I felt like um, things were becoming a little dull for me. And anyone that knows me knows that I like challenges. I cannot sit still like mentally. I need all right. kinds of challenges. You know, I can't just, just do one thing and be like content with it forever. Like I have to move on and do something else and challenge myself and know that I'm maybe able to achieve it or possibly fail at it. It doesn't matter. The point yeah. is that I'm gaining something from it overall, whether it's strengthening who I am as a person or whatever. Right. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try this. I got this email. It's like an uh, ad. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, sure. Click on it. Let's see what happens. And I told my husband, I was like, hey, I'm just going to go take this acting class real quick. We'll see what happens. And he was like, okay, well, have fun. <laughs> so I yeah. go. Um, but he knows to expect that from me. So I went and took right. the, the class and I was just like, wow, wow, this is so fun. People yeah. do this for a living yeah what <laughs> was, yeah. my soul was like set on fire i'm like this is just so exhilarating like i could be whoever i want to be like that's that makes sense i mean i am a professional wannabe i've wanted to do so many things my entire life like <laughs> yeah. you know like i looked at doctors i was like yes i, I looked at like you know uh, 
an agent and I'm like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> like I just yeah, anything yeah, yeah. I looked at, I was like, I want to be that. Everyone just made it look so beautiful and so like, you know, um, illustrious, just so nice. And and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try this. I'm just gonna like go mm-hmm. into this and just see what happens. And started acting, started looking for opportunities, got a few opportunities here and there, started with uh commercials. That was nice. a lot of fun. But every time I went on set, I remember feeling like this rush, like yeah. this adrenaline, adrenaline. rush. And there we like, go. We oh said at the same time. Yeah, the adrenaline. It's, it's so it true. It was so nice. It was yeah, so nice. And, and I can relate to everything that you're saying. Like for myself, you know, I went to university. I studied marketing and like a business major, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, thinking that I was going to work nine to five in an office. And, you know, I still uh, got my feet wet in that area. Like I, I, I saw what it was at, after graduation. But exactly to your point, um, you know, you, you, you go on set and you, you see what it's like to work with other people that are creatives and they yes. can't sit still. Like I was notorious for that growing up, you know, teachers would call my mom saying I'm a rambunctious kid. And I would always <laughs> take that. I would always, you know, take that as like a, a flaw. Right. And then I started to embrace that. Yeah. yeah. And that's how you zoom. And then now I, now I embrace it because I realize, you know, the stories I come up with or how I, you know, work with other actors or, or um, like I said, creatives that you start to see that you need to be that way because that's mm-hmm. the only way to stimulate your imagina- imagination. You know, I'm a yeah. big hero um, of Tarantino and you'll, if you follow this podcast, you'll start yes. to understand more and more that, yes. you know, I look at him and I say, the reason why his movies are so good is because he just runs away with his imagination. You know, he's not normal and that's a good thing. Um, yes. And as you get older, you know, you, you, when you're a teenager, when you're growing up, you want to fit in. That's all you want. You just want to blend in and you want to be like everybody else. You know, I grew up in an Italian family. Everybody's watching sports and that's how I wanted to feel. And, you know, going through film, I can relate to what you're saying is that you want it to be different. You want it to, mm-hmm. it's a liberating experience to be amongst Very. people that are expressing themselves. And it's all coming from this. It's all coming from the mind. Um, so it's, it's truly a compelling experience. And I'm so happy that you gave it a shot. You had the courage to, to go after it. Uh, people yeah, don't realize yeah right and and i love it and i love your like can do attitude <laughs> like, yeah yeah you know i'm a pharmacist but hey let's let's go Why not? I, I, it does beg the question though like how are you you said you couldn't focus it like how are you able to focus in pharmacy like studying that 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 to, to become a pharmacist I, I just can't process that so a lot of what i did in my life really led me to who i am today mm-hmm. um but actually doing that, doing that, fulfilling that career specifically allowed me to realize that I am able to focus very well, actually, if I really wanted to. Um, I actually have both brains, like left and right. I am really into science. I'm very fascinated by everything, you know, how um, everything comes together, but I'm also super creative too. Like I love to dance. I love to draw. Um, nice. now I'm, I love acting, you know, yeah. and in fact, I was in honors art, um, in high school where I used to draw and I was just like super into that. That's where right. I learned patience. Um, but to go back to your question, like it's, I don't even know, like, I don't even know how to, how to say it. Like it's, you don't even I don't know, know how you it's, did it. It's one of those things like you don't even know how just, you did it. Honestly, do you know how many times I reflect back and I'm like, how did I do that? Like, it was such a blur. <laughs> it was like two years, two years and 10 months in a doctorate program was like boot camp for my brain. Boot camp. I mean, brutal. I, I would it, study yeah. 12 hours a day. Wow. And, and I, and I'm kind of a perfectionist too. And I like, I also don't trust myself fully sometimes, you know, and I'm right. like, no, like I have to like go like the extra mile. Like I can't just rely on 80%. Like I gotta like yeah, yeah, push it yeah. further. So, um, I just like, I reflect and I'm like, I don't know if I could do that now. Like I did it then and that time in my life, it made sense. Um, it's something I had to achieve. I was going through a lot of things personally. Um, and that's just something that I had to fulfill, you know, and, and, and the reason I have this can do mindset is because throughout a a lot of my life, I've had people tell me, you can't, you can't, Mm -hmm. you can't, Oh, you can't do this. Oh, you can't do all these. Oh, I'm like, (sighs) who are you? (laughs) me a second you know, yeah like, yeah give me a second give me a couple years <laughs> yeah yeah get right back to you <laughs> but but really it's it, you like for me when I get that attitude um when I like way before when I was very young I would take it to heart and as I get older I start to realize like but who are you 
Because you start True. to realize other people, True. Uh, your pa- whether it's your parents or, or friends that you, True. you know, so-called thought that you, they were more popular or maybe they, they were Absolutely. doing it better than you. You realize like, wait, but who are you? You have so many other issues. You have so many flaws, you know, life doesn't Amen. go that your way either, right? Yeah. And, Amen. you know, not to throw my parents under the bus, but I use the prime example of them where it's like, you know, I, they, they work very hard, but I've also seen them struggle. I've also seen them lost their jo- lose their job. I've also seen them uh, not enjoy what they do. And yet yeah. the, our whole lives, right? We're told uh, if you go to school, if you get that degree, I was telling this conversation with someone, it's like your, your, your life will be figured out. You won't have any worries. And it's like, no, that's not the case. And even for yourself that has a degree in the medical field, I'm sure you had your own struggles, right? Whether it was landing a job, whether it was staying in that job, <laughs> you know what I mean? Proving yourself, you know? So many struggles. I mean, I got, I would say I got like lucky and I have someone like looking over me somewhere <laughs> yes, I um, because that too. Yeah. there's a lot of, or maybe it's my attitude towards life too. I don't know. It could be like a combination of all of that, you know? Um, yeah. But I remember when I graduated pharmacy school, the whole like can't thing came up again. And I remember my friends who are my colleagues were like, you don't have a job set up yet? I go, no, what do you mean? I mean, I'm studying in Massachusetts. I'm going back to Michigan and I'm going to work there and I don't have a job set up yet. No, they're like, what? Like you're supposed, I don't understand. And you know, they're just yeah, like, yeah, they couldn't it's process not right. It. Yeah. Like yeah. You're, you're, you're just going to have no job. How are you going to pay back your loans? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'll figure it out. I'm not worried. Yeah. Why are you worried? Let me worry about that. You know, that's, yeah. that's my thing. You have your thing. Let me have my thing. And yeah. as soon as I got back and I had worked with someone as a technician uh, many years before that, um, she contacted me. Mm-hmm. She contacted me. I was like, hey, you're back in town. I'm like, yeah, you want to be my partner? And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. just kind of fell into my lap. And I'm like, I'm not going to say no to this opportunity. This is awesome. And we worked together for a while. But my true ambition was for in pharmacy specifically was um, going into mental health because I'm completely fascinated by human oh, yes. relations, yes. Um, which is tied into acting actually tremendously. Yeah, I'm, I'm, for sure. I'm very impacted by like psychology, the human psyche, all of that. So that's, that was my drive, you know, and within two yeah. years I got into mental health, which is awesome. I love it. I think that's a great field, uh, to kind of pursue, uh, like that Avenue, uh, with mental mm-hmm. health. It's never been more relevant and talked about, uh, especially now with the pandemic, yeah. Um, it's something that I always, uh, you know, discuss on my channel, uh, discuss through these podcasts. I try to integrate the two because I feel if you don't have the mental health, you don't have the creativity and vice versa, right? Like right. you need the two, uh, to kind of work in unison and, you know, with the whole idea of mental health, um, you know, like I said, it's just something that a lot of people kind of struggle with. Um, a lot of people also channel it through their art, uh, like Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker, um, or any movie really he did after mm-hmm. um, his, his brother River Phoenix died. I thought that was so fascinating and so honest for him to say, you know, that yeah. he, it made sense to me, right? Like he used every, all the roles he did after that were all these gritty, dark, um, just raw performances. And he channeled all that anger, the, uh, that emotion uh, from what he, cause he always feels like he should have been dead instead of his brother. Or he That's, was one responsible, wow. right? It was like a nine one one call on YouTube. Wow. I showed it to my family the other day, and they couldn't believe it. Like of him at fourteen, uh, freaking out that his brother was overdosing. So that's wow. a traumatizing experience that he carried with him. And sure? you know, not to go that direction, not to go so dark, but the reality is, is that you know we're human beings, and it's not always sunshine and rainbows. There's a lot of dark secrets. There's a lot of deep dark areas of our brain that you know we keep reserved. We don't really discuss with other people, and if we're not careful, it can eat us alive. I -hmm. want to know with your opinions on mental health, like, have you suffered from any kind of depression or any kind of like anxiety, self-doubt when pursuing this career? Yeah. Anxiety specifically. Um, I had to teach in a pharmacy school. I had to teach a pharmacy management class. It was a part of my rotation. I'm a student teaching pharmacy management to students, my, my peers, my colleagues, my friends, Mm. Mm -hmm. um to like a lot of people and i was being recorded right Right. because there were like uh, two areas there's one in manchester one in worcester um where you know i was being broadcasted so yeah i had so much anxiety that day because i'm going on stage i just um came up with this powerpoint presentation i'm gonna speak to my so-called peers and i'm freaking out you know i'm like panicking having a little bit of anxiety, taking those deep breaths, trying to calm right. down. And it hit me like I've done this before. 
somewhere in my life. And I was like, it hit me again in that moment where I'm like, no one knows. No one knows that I have this yeah. anxiety. Acting kicked in. And <laughs> I just started talking. And I remember like afterwards, a lot of my, my colleagues were like, you're so confident out there. I'm like, no, <laughs> I was actually dying on the yeah. inside. <laughs> really struggling with that but if you believed it it made me believe it so it yeah. worked out you know so thank you for for like i absolutely love that confidence yeah in me. <laughs> i just want to interject i absolutely love when that happens when someone says wow you were so confident and you're like yeah you know i meant to do that it's almost like i meant to do that yeah totally yeah. it's all good right because it's like because yeah. because i've actually experienced the opposite where uh many times where people would come across and say, why were you so nervous? Or why were you? And that, that's where it's like, oh, I hate that it came across, even though you try to act, sometimes you're a bad actor and it's like, yeah. people aren't buying it. But in your situation, when you were saying that uh, people were saying, no, you came across so confident and, and your acting skills came through, uh, that must be so flattering and just oh, encourage, so flattering. yeah. And encourage you even more to pursue this, uh, <laughs> this passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think acting isn't like it's innate in a lot of us. And I think it might even be like for survival purposes, maybe back in the day, yeah. something happened and then you gotta like pretend you're dead or like, pretend like, you know, I don't know. I'm just making this up. Don't no, take for my sure. word for it. No, for but, sure. But maybe there is something like that. I don't know. What have you learned uh, from studying mental health, uh, from exploring it that you can maybe share with the audience, maybe share with myself, like some advice or some tips? Mm, I've learned that, like you said, we're very complicated. Um, we have a lot of versions of us. So when someone says like, be yourself, it's actually, I think, challenging. I don't understand that concept because mm -hmm. I think Same. there's more to us than just like being one way, you know, not yeah. to say we're two-faced either, but there's just more to us than that. We're dynamic, we're human beings, you know, we're complicated and we have a lot of parts of us, a lot of depth to us. Um, and mental health is crucial in, in like developing who you are as a character, as a person in general. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's important to focus on like knowing how to care for yourself, like have self-care, understanding right. the importance of it. It's huge. And I stress that a lot to everyone that I know, uh, to my friends and family. Um, it's important to know like what calms you down, what brings you to like center, what makes you grounded, what, you know, keeps you motivated, what makes you happy, like all these things. You have to like discover that in yourself and everyone's different. So I can't really tell you, Hey, this way of, you know, oh, I yeah. do this. Is it going to work for you? I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I do breathing techniques that helps me. Yeah. Um, but like, there's, there's a lot of things that people need to explore when it comes to mental health and there's no such thing as normal. Yeah, I believe it. No, I, and you know, I, it's, it's hard cause we grow up, uh, you know, we're, we're in a social media age and, you know, a big thing for me, especially being in my mid twenties, as you start to see like milestones, right. That people accomplish. And you start to think it, what, and what I doing, uh, is it normal? Is it considered normal or is, are they considered normal? And then you realize yeah. that there really is no formula to life. Everything that you see, everything that's, uh, you experience is a conception of human beings, right? We, yeah. we determine what time is we determine. That's why when I read the book, the power of now, for instance, I don't know if you ever came across it. Love, right? that one. love yes. it. Right. Yeah. Yes. I love when it says the past and the future doesn't exist. It kind of blew my mind. And it just went into this huge detail about how, uh, you know, we create time. And, yeah. you know, if you talk to, you know, have you noticed any animals being pensive or worried about, you know, depressed? Have you ever seen, noticed a depressed rabbit? And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I've, act, I've actually never noticed an animal like just sitting there, like thinking or being so consumed with their thought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like a robin came out with, <laughs> with wings. So consumed with their thoughts that they're so, um, that they don't even know what's happening around them. Like a yeah. human being can pass by them and they won't even flinch. And that's not the yeah. case. They're always alert. They're always in the moment. That's what he was yeah. trying to explain. And we use the examples of animals. I realized, yeah, we're, we're more sophisticated. We're more intelligent. Right. Uh, and the only reason why we ponder about the past or, you know, uh, be anxious about the future is because we have that ability. We have that subconscious uh, part of our brain. Um, but at the end of the day, like if you remove that idea, right? Like you said, people don't know you're having anxiety. People don't know what happened to you in the past. People don't even know what's mm -hmm. going to happen to you in the future. And yep. um, really like today, right now, this moment that we're talking is all we have, you know, yep. and I love how it ended it off too. 
how it said like, uh, you know, how will I know uh, when I've accepted the present or, or something along the lines of that, right? And it says when you choose to surrender. Oh no, when you stop, at, no, how, how do I know when I fully surrender? It's like when you stop asking yourself. Um, and that's what it is. It's, it's not surrendering, saying I'm weak, I'm pathetic. It's surrendering in the sense of uh, there's bigger things than me, right? There's bigger things at play and I'm going to do what I can control. But at the end of the day, I can't control everything. And I just, I, I really love that notion. And I think that's, that's something that can apply to everyone. Um, Absolutely. Not the idea of being yourself or being normal, right. but you know what I mean? Like yeah. surrender to whatever is in the moment. Absolutely. And it's, it's very hard for a lot of people to do that. You know, they have to practice it. Right. Practicing the power of now. Great book. You should read it. A great book. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, that's our plug. Thanks you for sponsoring yeah. us. <laughs> Thank you for sponsoring us, Power Now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. And, um, you know, I want to get into, because I did bring up the idea of social media and how, you know, we, we have that tendency of comparing and uh, just maybe looking to the other side and saying, uh, especially as creatives, like, oh, should I be that uh, at that place in my career uh, by now? Yeah. Do you have that uh, going on right now in your head? Uh, yeah, but I try to stop it because yeah. I try to tell myself I'm unique. I mean, we're all unique. We're all individuals. Yeah. We all have our universe in here, you know, yeah, our exactly. own way of thinking. And right. it's, it's not like good to, you know, to compare yourself in a negative way, like maybe mm. constructively. Like if you're like, hey, you know, I really like what that person is doing. I'm in that motivates me you know right. that's uh, gonna propel me in the direction that I want to go into you know mm -hmm. um but I think to go into that negative spiral of like oh my god like they're so much better than I am like oh, I'm never gonna make it like this is oh you know like that's you're only debilitating yourself you're only yeah. intensifying those fears that already exist within you because we all have fears yeah. there's no doubt in that you know and so you have to kind of learn how to eliminate those fears. Like my mother is the one who always told me growing up, like, don't be afraid of anything. And I'm right. so glad she continued to tell me that because I was afraid of everything, you know, right. like when <laughs> yeah. I was younger, yeah. don't, don't do that. You're debilitating yourself. You are ruining who you are. You're not allowing yourself to shine. Right. So, so, you know. That's no, it. that's, that's a great, I, I, no, that's yeah. a great, uh, I'm, I'm glad your mother was that supportive. I was actually going to ask you, um, cause when I hear that you studied pharmacy, um, you know, you, you, you pursue that profession. There's a lot of friends that I know that especially just going into university was because of, uh, their parents, right. Their parents, yeah. uh, desire. Is that something that, uh, did you have that pressure growing up or was more your enjoyment for science? not really yeah, like if anything great. my if anything my <laughs> mom wanted me to go into the arts she's like you should be an actress you should be a model you yeah. should go become miss lebanon what are you doing wasting your yeah. time with this book and yeah, i'm like yeah, mom yeah. i need structure <laughs> like that's what i yeah, told yeah, her yeah, yeah. i'm like i need structure i'm going through things okay <laughs> she's that's like, good okay. though but that's good and but this so, is what i mean that that's good what you were saying about having structure uh that's an interesting point is that like, uh, like my sister and I will, will battle about that. Like I'm the kind of person where I just want to be anywhere, but in one place, you know, like that's why I started my business 94 productions. I just see myself doing that. Even though sometimes I have that moment where I'm like, Oh, I want to be still. And she yeah. found me on structure about, you know, like what you were saying is I need to still know what I'm doing and what I'm, right. what I'm capable of. Uh, is that, is that kind of like the conflict you kind of deal with when you, when you do the arts, like, is it too sporadic for you? When you do these acting um, gigs? In some ways, sometimes, yes. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, uh, I can't just take off work just like that. Like, I have of a course. huge responsibility where I am. Of course, yeah. Um, so I can't just be like, oh, oh, you want me to go now? Sure, yeah. Let me just uh, <laughs> close down, head right there. Yeah. Um, it's That's been kind of like the biggest conflict for me. and But it has made me more critical of the choices I make. So, like, I'll look into something and I'll start asking, like, 25 questions, like, what okay. is this character? When is it shooting? And I'm like, sorry for being so blunt, but I need to know these things. No, and yeah. and I, I try to be as professional as possible. In fact, what I learned in school has taught me to be super professional. So I carry that into acting. And um, I don't always see it, which is surprising. You know, I'm like, wow, okay. Uh, I guess it's like not a norm in this industry to be like professional, you know? So um, yeah. But 
it's it has caught me off guard in some ways i had to like let go of certain things certain belief systems and just be like okay well this is how it is you just gotta go with the flow you just gotta you just gotta do it yeah you <laughs> just you, do it yeah and that, that's that's why i want to ask you like with regards to this acting do you see like an end goal? Uh, do you see yourself being like a movie star? Is that, is that what you're yes. kind of chasing? Yeah. Is that, is that what you're pursuing? Nice. Yes, yes, yes. I want to act until I die. Basically. Okay, cool. Great. <laughs> yes. So we found, um, we found a calling. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I will eventually leave my pharmacy career. Okay. If, if there is an, when there is an opportunity that okay, presents nice. itself, that is, um, demanding of like such time you know mm -hmm. absolutely yeah yeah no that, that yeah that's that's what I was curious about right because you were speaking of the whole structure aspect and you can't leave your job but you're saying that if, you, if the opportunity strikes um and you're, you're you're willing to take the risk yep wow that's absolutely yeah. wow that's amazing yeah, yeah. are you are, are you noticing like progress like if you have an agent right now are you are you getting some more roles uh, agencies, Productions Plus, I Group, okay, nice. uh, Arab American Casting, because I am Middle Eastern. Um, okay, nice. So, so what do they do? Like they reach out, they, they reach out yeah. to you if they have like a project? Right, right. They'll just send emails and stuff. So I've been keeping up with that. Cool. Um, but anything, again, it's all about my schedule too. And, uh, yeah. and I've been more critical of the role. Like, okay, is this, you know, something that's going to challenge me? Is this something that's because time is very valuable for me um, yeah. and I'm stretched out kind of thin in some ways. You know, I work 40 hours a week. I also uh, have like family and and friend yeah. obligations because that matters to me is maintaining like this uh, good relationship with people. Yeah. I have my social media presence that I try to grow. Sometimes I, there are days I can't post anything because I'm so busy. Yeah. Um, and also like with the whole COVID thing, like administering injections as a pharmacist on the weekends and then acting, but I don't yeah. want that to be the last that to me, someone recently like laughed at me because I'm like, Oh my God, I have all this stuff to do. Ah. And then and I'm like, but I also need to come up with more skits. And then they're like, I love that. That's like a priority to you. I'm like, absolutely. Like that's like, yeah. so important because that's my outlet. Yeah. That is what keeps me sane for me. And I think acting is therapy. Yeah. I think any, any, any creative outlet um, is therapy it is, is uh, good for the soul because, mm -hmm. you know, speaking of, I'll, I'll bring up my drawings again, because again, you've been, you've been supportive and I appreciate yes. that. Um, you complimented me nicely. Uh, <laughs> the drawings, the drawings at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, that's when I started them is because I was so bored. I was so, uh, there was nothing to do because um, I'm from Ontario, Canada, and we were in lockdown and uh, I was just really upset because I just started this business and I couldn't get out there and do anything. So I just said, what else can I do in the meantime? And I always wanted to draw, but I always had this voice in my head saying, yeah, yeah we're not that good. <gasps> and yeah, and, and I took, I, I know, right? You got to battle with the void, but that's exactly what I did is I just forced myself down. And I said, I don't give a shit. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to draw whatever I want. Yeah. And instead of drawing like Renaissance, you know, versions of uh, people, I just took a very simple back to basics. And I just drew characters uh, that brought me back to my childhood because I had a very, you know, uh, fond, I, I'm very fond of my childhood and, and, you know, the memories I had growing up. Uh, it was probably one of the best experiences of my life. And these characters that you see me draw um, speak to my childhood and they represent yes. that. So that, that's what I mean by the creative outlet being therapeutic is that whether it's acting, whether it's drawing and funny enough, even though I do films or corporate videos uh, through my business or directing short films, whatever have you, I still say to people or I'll still like my family will be like, what are you up to today? I'm like, oh, I'm just going to draw. And they're like, you're going to draw? Really? And then they'll joke around like, or my sister, like, oh, that's boring. Like, why don't you just like hang out? Why don't you just, I'm like, no, no. I'm like, I actually make time, like five hours put aside just to draw because I enjoy it. I, I listen to my podcast, whether it's Howard, Howard Stern or uh, Joe Rogan. I listen to, you know, how celebrities made it, uh, what they went through, uh, music. And uh, like, I'm thinking of for a next film project and I just draw and I just get alone with my thoughts. And it's honestly the best, um, the best experience, like you said, and I, and I related so much to acting, you know, I, I used to write as therapy, like mm -hmm. uh, screenplays, and I still do. But writing <laughs> requires a different energy. And actually, you can, yeah. 
you, you, by the end of writing, I've actually experienced exhaustion, like physically. It's so <laughs> yes. weird. Like my brain, yeah, it's just getting headaches, but drawing, I never had that. Like I get exhausted but in a good way, like a workout, right. like, like I'm pumped, you know, but yeah. writing, it's more like takes the life out of you uh, sometimes, but nevertheless, um, all therapeutic, all, all helpful in ways. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I just, th- like I said, I just love that you, you said, I got to make time for these skits on social media and people are like why <laughs> people are usually why is saying that like, on your list? Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I gotta get home and make dinner is usually what people say <laughs> I'm like no it's okay I can order something <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the beauty of Uber Eats yeah um but yeah so uh, uh because you brought up the skits I wanted to le- learn more about uh kind of what led you to that because uh, what's interesting about your social media page is uh, what I've noticed is it's not just, um, you know, posts about you, right? Just typical posts, uh, you posing and things like that. Uh, there's skits, uh, they're very tongue in cheek. Uh, there's also beautiful cars, you know, you profile cars, which is really cool. Um, and I'm a big fan of cars. One of my scripts is about like those supercars kind of thing. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, no, just very, very attractive. Like the, the, the cars, uh, the Porsche that there was one the Porsche with the racing stripe. Yes, uh, 911. Quick question, like, how do you, are these cars you own or are, are they just photo shoots? You, 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 like, what's happening? Oh my God, it's funny. Uh, the, the, the GT, yeah, it's my, it's, it's my husband's, the 911 nice, Porsche. Nice. Um, he wants to get rid of the stripes and I'm like, don't you dare. Don't you dare. No, that's what that's makes what it makes unique, it. right? That's yeah. what has its character. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, but I, my BMW is also, it's mine, the M2. Okay, nice. Okay. Yeah, I enjoy that car so much. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Um, but we both are into the car scene. We have nice. like people we hang out with on a regular who are also into the car scene. In fact, my husband right now, he is with his friends and they're driving around in their Porsches. Oh, <laughs> um, nice. It's something okay. they do like every Saturday in the morning. Yeah um but <laughs> keep it down out there i'm doing a skit yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah the car's so loud oh my i'm God. in a podcast <laughs> you know what that has actually happened yeah. um, i'm like oh i was doing so good not to re-record it yeah, yeah, yeah um but we both enjoy driving a little fast and uh yeah, we yeah. we like we just we like the cars we like the car community everyone's so nice everyone's so humble like around here and, nice. and respectful and so we just kind of got into that yeah so on top of from, acting aren't you that? from uh as they say motor city aren't you yes. from detroit yeah, yeah <laughs> so of course. course yeah it's appropriate okay perfect yeah. m&m yeah. that's where m&m is from that's, that's absolutely uh, eight mile eight mile yeah <laughs> um yeah, that's great. And and yeah, because I was always curious, like with these cars, I, I had a feeling like you've owned one or two of them, but I saw some other models. And like you said, whether it's the community you're with, or, you know, just profiling them is really cool. And you just integrate what I'm saying is all your different passions. And oh, yeah. I think that's the best profile, right? Is when you just show every facet of who you are. That's awesome that you say that. Thank you. Because I've had creators tell me like, you got to focus on one thing. And I'm like, but that's not who I am. Yeah. There you go. I don't actually focus on one thing. Like that's not even me as a person. I absolutely I detest. On, yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely detest when they say that. And, you know, I mentioned Joe Rogan because part of the reason why I started the podcast, I was really, you know, just intrigued by the idea of, you know, having conversations, just speaking your mind and mm-hmm. a great networking platform, you know, like I said, just connecting with you, like who would have thought, um, right. And <laughs> even do this podcast or social media. Right. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, when I started the podcast, I was doing research. They all said, you have to have a niche. You have to have like a, a certain target audience you want to look at. And I laughed because I said, yeah, you're right. Like there are some that do well, they do their own thing, but they're so limited. And it's like, right. if you're not talking about like one guy does a podcast on Johnny Carson and it's like, if, well, if you're not talking about Johnny Carson, what are you talking about? Like nothing, it, right. You, yeah. you're you limited. Exactly. And there's only so much to say. Eventually you're going to run out. And right. with Joe Rogan, what, what I found fascinating is the guy is literally a, a jack of all trades and like he's that. considered the number, right? Number one podcast in the world. Talks about MMA, talks about uh, guys, girls, you know, hookup culture, talks about uh, aliens, talks about uh, sci-fi, you mm-hmm. know, uh, mental health, talks about all these different things, drugs, rec- doing doing it recreationally, why it should be uh, legal in, in all 50 states. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just all these different uh, uh, co- pieces of uh, conversation that really blend together and you start to realize that uh, and he said it on his podcast that, that it, it speaks to who he is it's not for yeah. the audience it's for him right and if you enjoy his conversation then even better 
Um, and his friends gave him a lot of crap when he first started saying, you know, it's all over the place. People aren't going to listen. And he's like, who cares? You Don't. can't. And he's yeah, like, I you can. can't, you know, hello, <laughs> your, mm. your, uh, your can do, your can do attitude, which I, which I love. Yeah. It, uh, it's really inspirational for sure. Um, I always like coming across people that, you know, have a positive attitude because, you know, I, myself, you know, will we'll struggle with it. I think we all do as humans. We're naturally, you know, we think negative and we have to counter mm -hmm. that. Um, and especially again, during this time with the circumstances, I wanted to ask you like, how are things like with the pandemic? Like, are they getting things getting better? I know the U S is picking up uh, vaccinations and things are opening yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think they are getting better. I do see a bright future for all of us. Um, I will actually be administering vaccinations in two weeks on oh, nice. a Saturday. Nice. Uh, and I will be posting about it in case anybody wants to come. <laughs> I'll, fly, um, <laughs> I'll fly in <laughs> yeah it's like you can't not? do it <laughs> yeah no no I, there's stories of uh, i don't know if it was canadians or americans coming up uh i think it was more the canadians because we're, we're so far behind in vaccinations come uh, through tell in the beginning you know. yeah yeah right <laughs> tell the whole family there you go yeah no we we, we got our first dose um but Which yeah one? i got pfizer you got pfizer okay and how did you feel i felt fine i didn't even feel numb yeah, like I just, I was a bit awesome. sore on my shoulder. Did you get a va vaccine yet? Oh, yeah, I got both. Um, oh, you got both already fax, seen? Yeah, Moderna. The American speed. <laughs> I mm, love it. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Um, But I had side effects and, you know, I try to tell people like, you might experience side effects, most likely, actually. A lot of people do. Um, But like, it's nothing to be afraid of. Like I had a sore arm. I had a fever uh body aches but it was over within like 24 hours i was back to normal back to 100 percent. Right. but that's just my immune system doing its job yeah of course yeah you have well, to have you, an immune you, reaction someone that someone that studied study the medical field would know right. <laughs> much better yeah. than i am right like i love how you're yeah. just so confident like yeah it's just doing its job <laughs> it's just doing what it needs to do it's working remember, remember lecture three and uh miss uh hartman's class i know right <laughs> yeah wake oh, up <laughs> and immunology was a hard class because i actually got uh, my bachelor's of science in biology at wayne state university mm -hmm. and i remember that class being very difficult so it takes some seriously bright people to be in that field and to pursue it fully and to be scientists so i definitely have a lot of respect for anyone that pursues that and you know we can't forget that there are a lot of professionals working on this like that have years and years of experience yeah, no, a hundred percent. You gotta, you gotta yeah. listen to the scientists. That's what made me laugh too. Is, is there's just a lot of, uh, you know, opinions and uh, you know, just misconstrued information. And the the thing what made me again back to the conception of what human beings create for ourselves is the time and yeah, uh, right. It's like you know, it, it's black and white. Like right. The, if the if the virus is harmful or if the vaccine works, it, it works. Like it's period. Like there's yeah. no. There's no, like anything that you say after that is just human imagination, right? Yeah, exactly. So it, you must be like highly frustrated when you hear these stories as a pharmacist, right? Someone who spent, oh. dedicated so many years studying the field and you have to be told, you know, the earth You have is no flat. idea. <laughs> you have no idea. There were so many times I came very, very close to just, ah! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, no, no, don't do no, it. No, don't, no. Do it. Don't, ruin no. The, don't ruin the brand. Don't ruin the image. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't just yeah, calm yeah, yeah. down everyone has their fears i understand i actually understand um but there's a lot of signs a lot yeah and um it's not like it's not something that you just read like one sentence you're like oh, okay i got it boom it's done makes yeah. sense you know it's it's studying and understanding like i yeah, had years to... of dedication for sure <sighs> it was so exhausting just watching yeah. all those videos and I'm like stop please stop what? well that's why that's why when i first like i said when i uh, was going through your profile when we were connecting i remember that post about you being a pharmacist and i said to myself holy crap like you're a pharmacist and you're also pursuing acting uh because i know a lot of actors that are doing like you know two three jobs you know mm -hmm. uh, wait waiting and tables and uh you know sales and bartending mm -hmm. and you're doing like a respectable high you know highly Thank dedicated you. profession no but but do you get that like where people yeah. say how do you manage that like it's just all the time yeah amazing. all the time i actually have yeah. professionals like myself because i'm also friends with um other pharmacists and doctors mm -hmm. and nurses and they ask me this this question same question how 
how are you doing that? Because they know how demanding their career is. So right. like, how are you actually fulfilling like this, you know, part of your brain, you know, fulfilling that imagination, that, that side of you while also doing this, this is, it's very difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, it's a challenge, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I am blessed to, in a way, have a pharmacy job where it's not like um, typically like for pharmacists, the hours are very difficult. I work like 13 hour schedules and wow. um, yeah. So I, I got lucky working kind of like a nine to five. Monday through Friday. Oh yeah. Nice. That's off. perfect. Yeah. So I, I get to use my weekends and also like after work after yeah. five to do these things. Um, but it is definitely a challenge. And once I get to that point of like, you know, all right, this is where I, I want to pursue this role, like a hundred percent. Bye pharmacy. Sorry. Yeah. Guys. Bye pharmacy. Yeah. <laughs> How long, how long, I, I forgot to ask, how long have you been pursuing acting? Two years now. Three years? Two. Oh, two, two years. Okay. Two so years, yeah, yeah, you're still, still got a lot. Yeah. A lot of time. Uh, I'm fresh. Yeah. You're fresh. You're green. Yeah. No, only because <laughs> um, even for myself, like I, even though I felt like I've been doing it for like 20 years, I've only been doing mm -hmm. it for a three years study two, 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 probably more two years. <laughs> study. <laughs> um, but that's, that's what it is. Right. Is, is. We, we, we lose track and we, we think uh, I'm sure you you've had moments where you're probably a little bit of imp do, you, do you have impatience with, yes. with yeah with like roles or <laughs> yeah yeah right like your progression as an artist um, yes. but that's what I mean right like you say two years to me and I say two years to you and we realize yeah that's not like that long oh man no and I've been a pharmacist for eight years uh wait take that back 10 10 okay. wow 10 years now yep eight years in mental health nice see so, and it just a lot went of by. time has <laughs> passed <laughs> and, and if you talk to her it's a, it's a yes. blur <laughs> she doesn't know how she did it yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> i don't know what just happened <laughs> are you sure you, you're the one that wrote the exams or maybe it was someone else <laughs> oh maybe <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i oh swear i showed God. up <laughs> i swear i swear yeah no, um, but i mean like i said i've always had that creative side in me and i think everyone has it it just depends on whether you want to pursue it. And it just depends on whether you're willing to make the certain sacrifices and the dedication and put in the time and the effort. Cause it's a lot, it's a lot of work, you know? I mean, like I said, sometimes I come home after work, exhausting day, mental health, yeah, talking to a lot of patients, you know, trying to help people, trying to solve people's problems in a way any way that I can, um, creating solutions for them. And it's awesome because I have made a difference as a pharmacist. So I feel super humbled and like, like that's just such a fulfilling experience to know that I've helped some people. Um, but then I come home and I'm like, all right, time to turn on the creativity. Let's go. You know, Let's so go, I have yeah. to be like, I have to have that fire underneath me, that drive that continuously propels me to like, want to do this. And and I just go on. And then, you know, I get the phone call, like, let's hang out. And I'm like, yeah, I'll schedule in into my calendar on this day. And they're like, what do you mean schedule me in? I'm like, I need this calendar. Like, thank goodness for calendars. Because oh, yeah, for sure. I yeah. schedule a lot of people into my calendar. <laughs> so, so important to be organized. So important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's what that's a part of keeping me sane too. like being organized is, is a big part of it, actually, at work and my acting career and my social life like that's a big part of it yeah that's how you're able to do your job right and that's how mm -hmm. you're able to like you said build and i think it's so important what you said about keeping uh these relationships uh close um you yeah. know, not keeping because i I've, I've been guilty of that where um you're so caught up in your work where you don't have really time to connect with anyone and you'll get a text saying hey like remember me and i'm like ah crap i'm like <laughs> i just so uh so invested in my work that you forget um, yeah. and it's not like you're purposely ignoring them. It's just right. your brain keeps telling you, keep going, keep going. Don't yeah. get distracted. Don't get distracted. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, because yeah, for someone that agrees with me where you can't keep still, I yes. get, I don't know about you. I get extremely distracted. Like people used to make fun of me like ADD and stuff, but I, I'm the kind of guy oh. where I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm like talking and my mind goes, drifts off. But again, I, I think what it is, is that when, when I've seen how far I've come with like my career and, and filmmaking is uh, there must be a reason for everything, right? There must Absolutely. be an answer. And I think that's, that's my imagination, right? Just running. I'm always thinking of ideas. I'm always, I can't mm -hmm. like keep it still, you know, but 
that's not a really, bad thing yeah no that's no awesome. that's what i'm saying thank you thank you yeah no that's yeah. what i mean is that i'm gonna use it to, to my advantage right awesome. but what i'm saying is growing up um i would never know how to handle it what, what those comments i never know what that meant like i thought there was something wrong with me and i realized <sighs> that's so cool like imagine imagine making a film and you're at a panel and you're talking about the and you say that and, yeah. and, and you inspire like so many people that are listening i don't know that's just like where my mind goes like where Absolutely. it's like i can use it as a superpower it is and, you know people always used to say i'm distracted <laughs> you know, right there you go thank you you're like my hype beast i love it <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah, so th that was very kind of you. Thank you. And uh, that's for any creative, right? Listening or even for yourself that if you ever feel like, you know, your mind is drifting off too much. It's just because it's for a better, for a good reason, right? For a better yes. reason. Yes, right? For your Absolutely. skits and things like that. Do you create yeah. your own skits, by the way? Or, or are these people that usually reach out to you or you reach out to them? Um, I don't reach out to them. I just like, there's like a duet button oh, <laughs> on okay. uh, TikTok. And I just click it and i'm like let's see what we can do here. no no those ones those ones i know for yeah like on yeah. tiktok right i'm talking yeah. about um like one of them was called naked nuts <laughs> naked nuts what did i do there was now? one it remember. was like uh there was a black guy in the closet and oh like, my god shut up shut up yeah like there's just these, those, those skits what i'm talking about yeah yeah those are people probably that like connect and stuff right <laughs> Yes, yes, Dre yeah, yeah. is one of my friends. He reaches out to me sometimes. He'll send me like a message, like, "Hey, are you free?" And I'm like, "Yeah, let's do this." And and we have a good time creating together. We get along very well. He's he's a really awesome guy, actually. But yeah, he just usually reaches out to me. Just sends me a text like on a weekend or something, or like after work. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm available. Let's do it." Yeah, no, it's just an, another an, yeah another hilarious uh, skit because uh, again, I you don't know what what you're watching at first. <laughs> the guys are when you're like, "Shut the fuck up." And you close the door and the guy's reaction and he's like sweating buckets and i'm just like what's happened i know but it's, it's good crazy. it's good you, you get but you guys you guys have fun with it and i think that's the important thing right and yeah, that's what makes course. it that's what makes it watchable um, yeah we're we're putting ourselves out there like a thousand percent with yeah. zero care <laughs> with zero care exactly and i want to ask you um do you do you ever experience like pushback anyone has been nasty or social um, media not nasty just opinionated oh, yeah. and and i think everyone's entitled to their own opinion whether it's mm -hmm. positive or a negative feedback it doesn't matter to me i try not to take it so personal i'm just like you know they're voicing their opinion yeah. and i'm gonna respect that that's their opinion you know at the end of the day so um i just don't let it consume me yeah i again have to go back to the whole like cool maybe I'll take it. Maybe I won't. If it matters enough to me, maybe what you're saying, if, if it's like significant and I appreciate it that much, then yeah, maybe I'll take it into consideration. I actually really like people's feedback because it helps me grow as a person. And I'm like, am I, is this what you guys want? And I do like pleasing people and I do like helping people. It's just like who I am. Yeah. Also part of who I am. Um, of course, so, yeah. so I love like hearing what people have to say and it really helps me like push forward like okay yeah i'll continue doing this or i'll continue doing more of this or maybe i'll stop doing this my brother i don't know if you watch the videos like kind of sidetracked but not really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a uh, videos of me with the mustache i created okay, this yeah, character no, I, named I vic yeah was it a, was, an actual mustache or a snapchat filter no it was, it was a oh. snapchat filter which okay, i don't okay, yeah. think i don't think that exists anymore but yeah so random like okay. I was at work one day and I remember being inspired by a situation or a circumstance at work. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm just going to talk about it because this is therapy. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. just went on and my accent just kept changing. <laughs> it just kept getting like different kind of Southern. And, um, and I just went, I didn't even care. I was like, I'm still going to put that out there. I don't care. And I remember my brother like talking to me and my brother, like they all support, you know what I do. Right. Uh, but I remember him saying like, can you stop with the mustache? And I go, what do you mean? He's like, I just like, you're a woman. And I'm like, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Oh, yeah. I'm being silly. I don't even care. Like, I'm just, whatever. Maybe someone yeah. might like it. And I've had new, like a handful or maybe more amount of people tell me, where's Vic? We want to see Vic again. We need, yeah. we need to know what Vic is up to. And I'm like, you realize that that's me, right? Like Vic is not like, a different yeah. character like it's me but the fact <laughs> bring that back you your feel, twin with a mustache the fact that you feel he's a real person thank you yeah there you go <laughs> you know? there you go and it speaks to your artistry yeah that's great yeah that's a great i story. needed like i needed like a very different personality you know i'm mm -hmm. lebanese female right. so i went with like a southern white man <laughs> um and uh, just 
it, I was able to also speak my mind through that character. Like I was being the more like practical one with myself, logical. And then I was being a little bit more like rambunctious or like impractical with the other one. So I was able to like be myself and just both characters. Yeah. Because no, there's always great. two sides of you too. Like, ah, oh, should yeah. I do that? Maybe I shouldn't, you know? No, for sure. And uh, you, you, like you said, you got to just uh, commit to the role. You got to just try try new try new sides of your acting, right? Because mm -hmm. um, you just said it, right? You're Lebanese, you're a woman, um, and you can sometimes get pigeonholed in that that role, right? Like a yes. big thing for me was like, you know, yes. I told you at the beginning, I said, you know, being attractive, like you embrace that and you could be in that role where you're, it's like the typical, like, you know, you're being pursued by the man, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but that's what I mean by your quirky sense of humor is what kind of will put you in other roles, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, there's other sides to me, right? And you yes. won't just be typecast. Yes. Um, so I thought that was, I thought that's uh, I think that's a really cool and like uh, healthy approach, really, uh, to have actually about you know just telling people uh, thank you for your opinions. I'll consider them, um, but I might not. And yeah. I like I like how you I like how you because uh, I was reading a book about the Nef like Netflix corporate culture, and it was like over there they give feedback with candor, like they just tell people as it is, but mm -hmm. as uh, and you're not you're not supposed to tell them like rebut. You're supposed to just say thank you and walk away and mm -hmm. you don't have to use it you're just always supposed to say thank you and walk away mm -hmm. yeah and that's something that i've been actually trying like if i've got someone that says oh this looks cheesy or this doesn't look good or you you could you should be doing something better i always say thank you for the feedback mm -hmm. because it is feedback and i am thank thankful yep. that they're taking the time to watch it and absolutely reply back right yeah they care enough about you <laughs> that they are watching it exactly All right? it's just how they worded it that's how they chose to word it so sometimes yeah. it could sting a little and you're like it's okay i'm gonna be okay you know? yeah exactly i love how you rubbed yeah <laughs> do you Apply uh yeah to burnt area <laughs> being being married and, and and uh you know having a family do you do you ever get uh do they play an influence on your roles like does your husband ever comment on your kind of or is he very supportive on on anything that you put put you, out there you say like being lebanese because that first part cut off Oh, no, no. I'm saying like having a family, like being married, oh. right? Does your does your husband like have a an influence oh. or is he supportive? Can he be a little bit like, why are you putting that out there? He's 100% supportive. Wow. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. He knows. Um, <laughs> he knows what he signed up for. Something. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I signed up for this. Like she's yeah, yeah, yeah. too strong. When she wants to do something, she's going to do it. That's good. He knows that. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and he knows if I believe in something wholeheartedly, I'm going to fulfill it. And yeah. he's always there to back me up, but I also support his ambitions and, yeah. and then and anything he wants to do. We have that uh, understanding that really good Let him, letting him drag yeah. race Porsches. Yeah. Inside anymore. Like, have fun. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love, I love the uh, laid back attitude. And I think the important thing is that you guys have a trust, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of, sometimes people um, that pursue the arts or in the creatives, there's always that doubt or, they always have this misconception, but um, it, it doesn't matter, right? Like as yeah. long as you guys have that unity, right? And you you support each other on your your different interests. Um, yeah. That's a bit like, it's not like he's saying stick to like, I married a pharmacist. Like, why are you doing yeah. acting on the side? You know what I mean? Like I want to raise yeah. a family. He could be very traditional that way. It's more like, nah, you want to do the acting? Don't worry. Uh, I'm just going to call Bob and we're going to do some drag race, <laughs> you know? But like, can uh, I record it? <laughs> I kind of, I kind of, yeah, I kind of wish I had my own Porsche. I would show up and, and race, but uh, yes. you know, I'm just saving up, you know, there maybe you I'll go. get sponsored on this podcast and we'll make there it big. <laughs> there you go. Hey, yeah. when you do, come by <laughs> come by exactly yeah. and audi r8 that's that's a that's a car I've been, uh, looking at. yeah that's nice they're beautiful yeah. cars matte black yeah matte black nice yeah. what about wheels the rim also same black. thing like also black yeah well maybe like Murdered a glossy out. finish yeah Ooh. it's called a it's it's uh it's a finish like it's online called audi r8 valkyrie oh yeah i came across it yeah i don't know if it's a certain customization but just a gorgeous car i feel like it suits me and that that's kind of like a car i would want to um i don't know be my prize hey um, i'm already imagining you in it oh thank you thank you mm -hmm. getting me getting yeah. in all right perfect. putting it out there <laughs> putting it out there but love it yeah. thank you so much yeah. <laughs> you're, you're too kind i'm, I'm serious you're, you're my hype beast <laughs> all right but uh you know i really um thank you again for coming on this podcast thank um you. i plan to have more conversations with you as well like document our journeys and uh just seeing uh, our progression as artists uh, i think that'd be a lot of fun 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you so much. You're a huge success. Keep going. Don't stop. Thank you so much. You as well. All right. Thank you. Thank yes. You. And the can do attitude, everybody listening, you know, listen to Hala. Like she, you she can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Don't <laughs> listen to anyone. She's from the city of Detroit, where yes. Eminem famously said, you could do anything you put your mind to, man. <laughs> from the lose yourself music video absolutely yeah I love yeah. That music video. <laughs> yeah i know it's so good the movie too eight mile and stuff that's great um yeah great great time anyway uh yeah thank you again thank you again everybody for listening and we'll talk soon absolutely